<laughs> Got it. All righty. So then let's welcome Aaron Foss, Program Director of Booth, Booth Brownhouse. Welcome, Aaron. Hi, everybody. I brought Hannah with me. She's going to do a little talking, too. Um, but first of all, thanks for having us. Um, excited to always talk about who we are and what we do. Um, I learned that we're in Subdistrict 1, so that's awesome. <laughs> um, but I thought, before talking about who we are and what we do, I thought I'd give uh, talk a little bit about uh, the history of Booth Brown House. Um, it's, uh, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed the building, have seen the building. It's a huge, huge old brick, brick building right on Como Avenue. Um, and it's actually, it was built in 1913. Um, and it's always been a Salvation Army owned and operated building. So it was originally opened as a home for unwed mothers. Um, at, at the time, women who were not married could not go to a public hospital and have their babies. Um, so they came to Booth Brown House. Um, and it operated as a home for unwed mothers and a hospital for unwed mothers um, until the 50s. Um, and since then, it has kind of evolved, um, kind of whatever the needs in the community are at the time. So it's been residential treatment facility. It's been um, county contracted placement um, with Ramsey County for um, juvenile justice and CPS. Um, it's been a shelter for minors. Um, as it stands today, so there's kind of two programs in the building right now. Um, so we have an emergency overnight shelter, so it's 16 beds of overnight shelter for youth 18 to 21. Um, and then it is 35 apartments um, for youth uh, 16 to 24. Um, so that's kind of just a quick general overview. And Hannah's going to go into a little bit more about each of those programs. Yeah, so within those two programs, like Erin mentioned, we have the overnight shelter and the housing program. Um, each program has case managers. So within the housing program, we have two case managers and we have 35 units. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on, we have, so we have, and within the housing <laughs> program, we have two programs. So because we serve minors, we have a license through the Department of Human Services. And then we also have some permanent support crops. Um, so the goal is for everyone that's there not to stay there. It's more of a transition. So that's why we have case managers in place for that. Um, within our overnight shelter, uh, we also have a case manager and they're allowed 60 day stays. So somewhat, it's kind of different for some adult shelters. It's one night at a time, but if they book their bed and they're behaving and they're coming back on time, mm -hmm. they can have that bed for 60 days. Um, within the food Brownhouse as well, we do a lot of programming and bringing in outside providers um, so that they have tools when they leave Food Brownhouse that they're not always coming back to us, that they have outside providers in the community that they can connect with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's just a general overview. Um, yeah, so just a kind of a couple notes on how you get connected to us. So all youth, obviously, if they're in shelter, they're currently experiencing homelessness but all youth in our housing program are also referred to us um, as a youth who's experiencing homelessness. So everybody who comes to us has, has that background. Um, that's probably the only thing they have in common. Mm -hmm. um, our, uh, for our housing program, or for our shelter program, excuse me, um, it's self-referral. So mm -hmm. when we have a bed available, um, we post it on a website called ysnmn.org. Um, and each day at 10 a.m., we update that as well as any other youth shelter in the Twin Cities area. So any age, any, you know, some youth shelters are 16 to 20, some youth shelters are 10 to 17. So a lot of different options. Um, and so all of us collaborated, collaboratively work to keep that updated. So if you ever come across a youth in need of shelter, that's your best resource. Um, and so if we have a bed available, uh, they can just call the building, they can book the bed, we do a quick kind of initial intake screening, um, mostly just have you been here before, we may be restricted from accessing for whatever reason, um, and then we run a quick background check, um, and we're really just looking for any um, violent person-on-person -person felony or any sex crimes or arson. Um, other than that, they're welcome to come. As Hannah mentioned, the bed is there for 60 days, um, but it is overnight only. So they are, they do leave every morning at 9.30. Um, they're welcome to keep their belongings in our building. So we have, everybody has their own locked closets. That's kind of our check-in and out system. You give me your key in the morning and I give it back to you at night when you come. Um, we serve dinner in the evening. Uh, when we serve breakfast in the morning. Um, and we also give them two box tokens every morning when they leave. 
wanted to get someplace safe for the day and wanted to come back. Um, as Hannah mentioned, there's cake management. Uh, we did also start probably eight months ago or so, um, keeping uh, allowing the shelter youth to stay all day on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, Mondays we bring in a mental health provider from Face to Face, which is a serving organization. Um, and we have a couple of other providers that come in on Mondays. Um, Mink comes in, um, Tired come in, Clinic 555 to kind of bring on site providers. Um, and we do the same thing on Thursdays. Um, in addition to just our own internal programming, team nights, movie nights, cooking mm -hmm. classes, things like that. Those are also offered. Um, Hygiene, I, hygiene is uh, provided, um, the, the style of the shelter, um, so it's congregate living, it's about three or four youth per room, um, when they call to book the bed, uh, they're assigned a room based on their self-identified gender, so whatever room they want to be in is fine with us. Um, we do have one single occupancy room, so during COVID it was great. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also used if there's a fight or uh, some kind of disagreement between youth and we need to kind of split them up or separate them. Um, so we do have a single um, youth room or single occupancy room. Each congregate living room also has its own half bath. So bathroom and sink or toilet and sink right in the room. And then um, we have individual shower rooms. Um, so that's that hygiene items, clothing, um, we have on site. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that's kind of the basics of shelter. Um, the housing program, um, very independent model. They all have their own apartments. It's an apartment just like an apartment in the community. It's maybe just smaller. It's an efficiency apartment, but it has full bathroom, full kitchen, um, all that kind of stuff. They're welcome to come and go as they please. Um, we have staff on site 24 hours a day. Um, so there is like a director, we call these advocate staff on site at all times. Um, and they have case managers, um, so can meet with their case managers whenever they would like. They're also all the programming, all the service providers, the mental health uh, providers also available to them at any point as well. Um, we do, they are charged rent, um, so they are expected to pay rent, and we use a step-up model of rent. So um, for our younger um, youth, our minors, a lot of them are still in high school, um, they move in at $200 a month. And then the second year they're with us, it's $300 a month. And for our permanent supportive housing, um, it's $300 a month. And then it goes up until it gets set back at D. Um, so every year they sign a new lease and they increase their rent, just like you would in the community, <laughs> um, with the idea that they kind of can work themselves up to real world expectations. Um, I'm well aware 550 is not <laughs> even close. But um, it's been pretty successful so far and kind of getting them prepared for what to expect in that next step. Um, all of our youth, I mean, that's what applies to shelter as well, um, but all of our youth in our housing program are also welcome to stay connected with us um, for about a year after they move out, if they need anything, if whatever they might need, they're welcome to stay in touch with their case manager. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the nuts and bolts of who we are, where we come from um, as a program and yeah, so is there any questions? And Lauren used to be one of our shelter case managers. Um, <laughs> I've talked about that quite a bit. <laughs> right, I, so so thanks and welcome. Thanks for sharing that information. Are, are there questions? I thought I saw someone raise a hand, but I couldn't, I only saw the arm. I don't know who it is. Maggie? <laughs> yeah. Um, what is the, you know, it sounds like you've got, you've got folks who are minors or who are mm -hmm. in high school still. Yep. So how does that work with like, I assume that means you have relationships with the local high schools. To um, some extent, like can the high schools refer people to, to you? To some extent, yes. Okay. Uh, we also have, um, she's not just a volunteer, but um, we actually have a, had like a formal partnership with uh, St. Paul Public Schools. They send a tutor over um and during the school year she would come every i think it was like tuesday night mm -hmm. she still comes bless her heart um <laughs> been retired for years but she still comes miss shirley um but a lot of that yes school social workers can refer um and we build relationships with them a lot of our youth because they're experiencing homelessness mm -hmm. fall under their 
home school district or their previous school mm -hmm. that they attended, not St. Mm -hmm. Paul Public Schools. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of, um, right now we have a couple shelter youth, mm -hmm. um, one that's being bused to Chanhassen. So the bus comes every morning at 6.30 to get them. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of depends on where their home school was, because mm -hmm. um, that's still their school and that district is still responsible for supporting them while they're experiencing homelessness. Um, but through that, we've gotten to build relationships with a lot of schools. Um, we also have a lot of students that do, or a lot of students who have done alternative schools. So um, Gordon Parks High School, the Reporting Arts, um, a lot of a lot of schools like that, um, and have built a lot of relationships with those those schools as well. Um, we do Gordon Parks does like a resource fair okay. every year. We attend that, um, or a couple times a year. They do for their students. Um, so yes, they can be referred. Um, another thing we've done sometimes with um, school social workers has called and says, I have a student experiencing homelessness. They're very unsure about going to a shelter. That could be a very scary thing. Um, and they brought you to the shelter just to tour it first, mm -hmm. to see it, to meet us, to decide if that might be a good fit for them or not. Mm -hmm. um, so we have done that as well. Um, but yeah, school social workers, we get calls from Regents Hospital, we get calls from all over. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Other other questions? I was just going to ask. So I know we we did a drive yeah, with you yeah. all for the ice cream socialist past year, but for you were saying like clothes stuff is provided, like um, you know, those kind of things. Do you like rely on donations for that? Is that like a granted thing? Yeah, is it question. how does that work? Yeah, it's it's a little bit of both. I will say that. So um we do have so we also do um uh, for our youth moving into our housing program, we do provide a move-in kit. So like, what are the very basics you need to get your very first apartment? Um, stuff for your kitchen, stuff for your bathroom, bedding. They, they are providing a bed and things like that, but then we buy the sheets and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a little mix of both. So we do have funding that provides um, that we can buy some of that. Um, some of that is just our own internal Salvation mm -hmm. Army money for mm -hmm. fundraising events or other things. Um, and some of it does come from donations. So okay. yeah, okay. it's mixed. <laughs> Alrighty, and I have one question. Who was yeah. Booth Brown? I tried Googling it, but I could That's not find. That's a very good question. Um, so if anybody knows anything about the Salvation Army, um, pretty much any program, any Salvation Army building housing program is a historical Salvation Army name. Um, so there's a there's a Booth Manor in every city. There's a Harbor Light in every city. It's a, a Salvation Army brand, if you will. Mm -hmm. Booth Brown is not that at all. Um, so mm -hmm. William Booth is the founder of Salvation of the Salvation Army. So that's where Booth comes from. Um, but there is no other youth program like this in any other. Salvation Army youth program like this in any other state. Um, and so the brown comes, so the, we call it, I mean, we call it the old side of the building and the new side of the building, there's two sides. Um, and the, the new side was put on in the 50s, the donation from Earl Brown. Um, so that's how we became Booth Brown. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Good yeah. history, thank you. Yeah, and anybody's welcome to just, Come by for a tour if you want, or shoot me an email. I'm happy to give a tour of the building. Kind of the history of it is one of the coolest parts. So awesome. That sounds great. Maybe Lauren, you could arrange something, you know, kind of coordinate some deal. You can think about it just as a file that away. That would be possible, fun. Yeah, I'll we'll tell you guys about how thing. not haunted the building is because I tried <laughs> so hard to see a ghost there, and I never did. <laughs> I All righty. Like Seriously, There's Mike. All the old staff always tell the brand new staff about the ghosts in the building. Um, Come on. Kind of the running joke. But I mean, there is like an incinerator in the, in the basement and there's a attic, gutted attic that's a little creepy, but. I crept around all these places at night trying to see a ghost in the middle of the day every, every time. <laughs> Nothing. But it's a cool building. The architecture is really pretty. I, I would like to give you a tour late at night. Kind of. <laughs> Ghost tour of Booth Brown House. Right. All righty. Well, I I should I should re reel this in. I can I can envision Shevik looking at me through the computer. Um, oh, there's another question. 
Yeah, I put two questions in the chat. Um, is oh. there job coaching programs for the kids? And I know there's work being done on the building, on the outside painting, and just wondering some ongoing work that's um, occurring there. Uh, you did a really nice job taking down the lilacs and opening up the front and the new sign. We walk by it every day with our dogs. So um, just always curious about um, what's going on there. And there have been several books written about uh, either the women at Booth Brown or people who've lived there over time. So history, history, fun. <laughs> There's one that recently came out a couple of years ago called The Booth Girls. Um, and it was written by a woman whose sister was born there, um, and she did a lot. She's done a lot of work for um, with the Minnesota Historical Society. That's kind of how it started. She wrote a lot of great books. So we we have a um, we did a Sunday series where she spoke. So there's a recording on the District Ten website too of her talking yeah. about it. So. Yeah. Um, your questions, the job coaching. Um, so. Kind of as Hannah mentioned, um, kind of our model of service delivery, if you will, is uh, setting youth up to succeed outside of Blue Brown House. So we try to, and we also know our limits, um, <laughs> and job coaching specifically is not in our wheelhouse. So we bring in hired, often youth can enroll with hired. Um, job Corps is obviously just up the street, so we've had youth enroll with Job Corps. Um, there's also um, a really cool uh, community coffee shop called Wildfire Coffee Shop that specifically mm -hmm. um, works with youth um, experiencing homelessness in the job readiness program um, and employs them and pays them to come to class and learn those things. Um, also run by a former Blue Brown House staff. Um, so uh, we kind of we try to bring in some of those things um, and have youth enroll in those programs. Um, obviously, our own team does a lot of stuff with um, job searching and resumes and helping get them there if they need to an interview or something if they would need. Um, but a lot of the job coaching kind of sort out. Um, as far as the building goes, um, there's always something that the building needs repaired. Um, but fortunately, in the last year or two, our organization has really understood the need to invest in the building um, and take care of it. So um, the head got removed and opened it up. Um, our big fundraiser every year, we don't ring bells like a lot of Salvation Army locations. We park cars to the state fair, which means they've been parked all over our parking lot for 60 years or all over our yard. I'm hoping to stop doing that um, and create usable outdoor space for the youth um, and stop parking on the lawn. So that is a goal of mine. Um, the Some of the exterior work that was done was on the um, a lot of the wood the woodwork on that old side of the building was rotting. Um, so all of that got replaced um, and it got painted. Um, we're still working on some landscaping stuff, um, some stuff in the parking lot, um, restriping, kind of redoing that. Um, and then there's just a lot of, lot of things internally. Um, it's a hundred year old building um, run by 75 year old systems. Um, so currently the elevator doesn't work. Um, um, so things like that, um, where we just got a, a, a really big grant to do a lot of work with the HVAC system and upgrade that, um, as well as kind of overhaul um, the inside. So it's a beautiful old building. Um, the inside looks like an old building and 18 and 19 year olds don't really appreciate living <laughs> in building. Um, that looks like that. So we're hoping to, to really, um, you know, new carpet, new furniture, um, more technology inside. Um, we've kind of started these before before our own organization kind of helped us um, take on this effort. We were doing it ourselves. Um, we did a lot of painting ourselves. Lauren's roommate painted a super cool mural for us in the building. Um, so there's always something going on. <laughs> great, right great. There. All right. Well, well, thanks, yeah. thanks, Aaron. We can, should we should wrap this up and 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 move on. To, can can I say one thing, Dan? Sorry, do you mind? Yeah, yeah, um, we, sorry. Who, who was that? Ari, sorry. Sorry. Um, do you guys are you guys familiar, um, Aaron and Hannah, with Right Track, the City of St. Paul, at all in terms of job jobs for youth? No. 
don't so the city so. city of St. Paul has a job. Um, it's Thank called Right Track for Youth. It's a okay. big job program. Um, every summer they hook up youth with jobs. Um, so that might be something you want to look into. Yeah, um, a lot of community people that I'm sure would would hook up with you guys and um tell you about how it goes. But each rec center has two or three kids at work uh every yeah. summer and then into the school year as well but then they also hook up with like um corporations as well so just something to look okay. at do for you guys um in terms of that job job piece okay yeah that'd be cool yeah, all right so do you do you have a could you maybe put a link or something in the in the chat that we yeah could, um... i can put a link to the right track website and then if you um i'll send it to you yeah i'll send it to you yeah. Oh, you okay. are okay. Great, great. Okay, perfect. Yeah, Excellent. and then thank you, Chevy. You want to give them my email too, just in case they want. I can probably yeah. hook them up with someone too. So just let me know. We have one more question in the streetcar station. Yeah, I do. I know we're running a bit late. Would it be okay if I talk about a collaborative effort, effort opportunity? Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't. Would it be okay if yeah. I? Okay. Yeah. I have a couple of things uh, yeah. for you. Our community, our environmental committee. Uh, we went through a Como cleanup around the late during the summer on Saturday, as well as Tuesday evenings, four of them. And then also in the fall, we do a cleanup of leaves on the streets for uh, to remove phosphorus to prevent it coming in. Would that be something that your organization, not staff or adults, but uh, your your residents there can be participating in? Sure. Yeah, yeah. If I can get email address and then yeah, I think uh, he has. I know Hannah brought her business card. I forgot. Um, and you're welcome to share our contact information with the whole group. I'll follow up in the yeah. in the video screen yeah. and then follow. Absolutely, that'd be awesome. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Okay.